if you go into the central basement area of our house, sort of under our living room, there's a space that we've always wanted to make into our family room, sort of the media center, fun room, game room, VR room, <laughs> the, the room that's sort of our public space. And it's been kind of a dumping ground for stuff for the last few years that we've lived here. And we'd like to clean it up and make it into a comfortable family space. It's in the basement, so it stays cool in the summer, and it's really cozy in the winter. The one architectural move that I'd like to make is to build a wall at the back end of the room, and it will close off the, the dark section of the space, the space that's buried the deepest underground. And that new space will be a storage room, on the back side of that wall and on the front side of the wall will be our new family room and i'd like that wall on the back side to help support the storage shelves for the storage room and on the family room side have a series of display shelves and below that a series of drawers for all of our games and puzzles and and those kinds of things and this wall will also hold our new TV and sort of be a, a media wall. So really this whole project comes down to building this wall. <laughs> so this room isn't just a dank basement room. It's actually got nice wood paneling and these beautiful old fir beams. And on one side, there's a big brick hearth. So it has a lot of nice materials. So I had Bonnie sand the big beams, and those are in much better shape now. I am excited to be joining the Maker's Mob and to entice you to check it out. There are a few freebies that you can sign up for, and I will have a link in the description of the video below. To get started on the project, I need to build a stud framed wall. So I cut the vertical studs to length. The shelves that I'm going to have on the family room side, I'm thinking will be basically floating shelves, as in there, there won't be any vertical support except for where they're attached to the wall. So I need some blocking in the wall to hold those shelves so that the structure for the shelves will be hidden. Into the vertical studs, I half lapped horizontal blocking at each shelf, which will give me the structure to hold the shelves up. I used the radial arm saw to cut the dados both into the vertical studs and into the horizontal blocking. So I started with the studs, then I laid out the cuts for the horizontal pieces and I cut those in the same way. They would just be not quite as wide as they would fit the width of the vertical studs. And hopefully, if I've done everything right, the face of the studs and the horizontal blocking will be flush. It's a little bit finicky for a stud wall, but I figure it's not very big and it'll make putting the shelves up easier. I think usually floating shelves are done on an existing wall, and you have to jump through all these hoops to get the, the floating effect of the shelves. But because I'm building the wall, I can build the structure that I need into the wall itself. Now's the moment of truth to fit all the pieces together and see if they'll actually work. And it seemed to go together just fine. I had checked all of the cuts I had made for width to make sure that they would be big enough. So everything really should go together. I made sure it was fairly close to square. Then I could start screwing all the pieces together. I like to use screws over nails just for the fact that I can take it apart if I need to. And there's something in knowing that you can take it apart that allows you to proceed. I, I tend to get bogged down with making it perfect if I know it's going to be permanent. 
<laughs> so once the pieces were put together on the floor, I could tip them up into place. I made it in two sections, mostly just so I wouldn't have to deal with really long two by fours and it made it easier to work with. So I attached the wall at the ceiling and made sure it was plumb or vertical, I guess. So I made it just a little bit short and then I can use shims to make up the difference. As the, the center of the wall was much closer to my ceiling than the ends. As in an older house or even a newer house, the height from the ceiling and the floor isn't necessarily always the same. I made it parallel with the beam in the ceiling. So I cut out some five inch pieces of blocking that I could use to hold the wall at the same distance all the way along. And I could connect the two sections together with some more blocking. <laughs> I had thought I might want to rack the wall one way or another, so I only used one screw at the connections between the studs and the horizontal pieces. So once I had it up, I could add a second screw. I need to put the plywood surface on the wall at this point. This is a little more challenging than just putting up drywall because I can't just tape and mud the seams after I'm done. I want some of the joints to be absolutely flush on my sheets of plywood. I've worked it out as well, so some of the joints will fall behind where the shelves will be. And for those joints, I don't need to worry about how tight they are. I put up a two by four to hold the sheet of plywood in place. And I left it just a little bit low so that I could use shims on the plywood to get it to exactly the location that I wanted. And I know where the shelves are going to be so I can hide the screws behind the shelves. I found fur veneer plywood, which is the same wood as the basement, but feels a little bit more modern as it's new and, and clean. <laughs> We thought about different woods to make this wall out of, whether to go light with something like birch or maple or dark like walnut. But in the end, we decided to just do fir and keep the wood the same and that the difference will sort of just be in the newness of the wood. Now the plywood comes in four foot sheets, so I didn't quite have enough to do the full height that I needed. So I have a strip at the bottom, which is what this is. And that seam will be hidden behind the shelf. So that the seam that I'm worried about here is the vertical joint between the two pieces. Because that seam you will see in the end. And I'm going to have a piece in the space between the wall and the beams and the columns. So I put up a piece of blocking that I will attach that piece to later. But that'll give me an edge to work on the bottom here. There will be drawers at the bottom. So I'll put a piece of fir plywood at the base and then cut a piece of cheaper birch plywood to go behind the drawers. The air return for the duct system in the house that was in that basement room will now be in the storage room. So I'd like to make some air openings or some vents in this wall to allow air to flow from the big family room into the storage room. As the supply for the basement is in the family room and the return will be in the storage room. <laughs> which is fine, but I just need to let the air move between those two spaces. So I'll hide some vents behind the drawers. Also, the wall won't be airtight. These vents aren't entirely necessary, but they'll just help with the air movement. And I can attach that birch piece to the wall. 
So at this point, I have the wall up with the surface on the wall. Now there's a door on the left side of the wall, which I hope to make sort of a hidden door once the whole project is finished. So at this point, I'm going to stop this video and soon I will have a video on the rest of the project. If you'd like to see more of the basement project, I've got a video link here at the end of this video. Thanks for watching.